Hey guys, welcome to another Reaper Blog tutorial. Today we're going to compare five different EQs, and they're all very different EQs. Uh, some of them are dynamic EQs, where there's a uh, compression element. They all have pros and cons, and we're going to go through them pretty quickly. Before we get started, guys, I want you to subscribe to the channel. Alright, let's go. So let's start off with all the EQs off. I've got a compressor on it, Fairchild 670. Um, from T-Rex and uh, Tone Boosters Barricade just as a master limiter. So we're gonna start off by just listening to this. Okay, so that much of the song pretty much covers all of the little problems that I've heard with this song. Not really problems, it's a good sounding mix, but it does need some mastering EQ. The things that stood out to me are that uh, the kick could have a little more thump. So I want to bring out a little more kick. There's also a bass note that's sort of just overpowering all the way through. It always gets so strange when I'm around you. And I think it kind of gets in the way of the vocal. So in addition to controlling that bass note, I want to also uh, make the vocal a little more upfront. And overall, it's a little bit dull, so I need kind of a, a high shelf. Now, later on in the chorus, there's a... Uh, really strummy, picky sort of uh, acoustic guitar. Sort of scratchy, and I think there's kind of like a resonance that is not too pleasant. So we're just gonna go through these EQs one at a time, and I'm gonna just kind of do a quick EQ of this track as it's playing through, and I, I may not say anything during this part of it, I just want to get that EQ right, and then we'll talk about kind of pros and cons and some of the features that each EQ has. So basically what you'll see is me using it in the way that I would normally use it, and then we'll just talk about the features. All right, here we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Re-EQ is a very basic EQ, very fast to use. It's not linear phase. There's no dynamic uh, portion of it. You can't select which channels it's applying the effect to. It's always in stereo, same EQ applied to left and right. It does have some nice features though. So we can show and hide these, the tab, uh, which gives you all, all the controls. We can resize this. Uh, recent 
update allowed that, which is great because I mean, who wants to work on a tiny little window like that anyways? So resizing, that's a, a, that's a big plus. Mouse control always works exactly how you would expect. Um, and you'll see in some of these other plugins that that is not always the, the case. So when I grab one of these and pull it left and right, uh, I expect it to work a certain way. So left, right, uh, up, down, that all works. Um, but mouse wheel is where things get weird with a lot of the plugins. So if I push my mouse wheel down, it narrows the queue. And I, if I push it up, it widens it. So uh, some of the other ones are kind of reversed of that. If we double click, it will bypass the uh, selected band. If we right click, we can choose a different band type. Uh, we can do things like flip all bands. But there's no way to scale this EQ back other than blending it in in parallel. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. The, the mouse wheel controls make sense. Uh, if I pull down, it goes narrower with the bandwidth. You know, I'll, this just feels very intuitive and uh, and easy, and it's the right kind of speed. As I move that mouse wheel, it seems like it's a very ratio. The same with if I use a, a controller, it's very much... Yeah, it, it's, it feels right. So maybe that's just uh, because I'm used to it, but compared to these other plugins, uh, that's a really big deal that it that it just feels right when you're either turning a knob on the controller or moving your finger over mouse wheel. Uh, yeah, it makes a big difference in the speed that you can work. So downsides of this plugin, uh, you can't choose which channel, which means that you can't use uh, just left or right or just mid and just side channels uh, per band or even in the whole plugin without going through a mid side matrix or using multiple instances of the plugin. And as I mentioned before, there's no way to scale back the frequency thing. It's fast to use. It covers a lot of the, the important things. From a workflow standpoint, I think re-EQ is hard to beat, but there are better ones out there. All right. Next EQ is the Tone Boosters EQ3. So this plugin's a lot smaller. It can't be resized. Uh, but let's just see how it sounds, how I would use it in a normal kind of workflow. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this one. Some things to note with this one, like I said earlier, you can't resize it, and that's a big pain because this is such a small window. I probably zoomed in in the video uh, for you guys so that you can see that happening, but um, but yeah, it's it's small. You can't resize this. 
Uh, it's a fixed number of bands, so there's only six bands. Each band can be selected uh, all channels, mid, side, left, or right. It's mostly the mid channel that I was EQing more than uh, in all channels. The mouse wheel seems to work about right. Um, I think it's re reversed of of uh, re-EQ, where I press, press up, it gets wider. TB EQIs are three. I pull up to get narrower. So that's a little bit backwards, and that takes some getting used to, but it's not too slow, it's not too fast. Dragging these around feels good, and the controls down at the bottom change very quickly. So that's good. Right-click will bypass the band, and then left-click to re-enable it. Uh, this plugin also has auto makeup gain per band, which is kind of an interesting thing. I don't really use it. I find that, especially finding frequencies that I need to notch out, uh, I, I don't like the auto makeup gain. It just makes it harder to hear things. I think it's important to have, but not something I use all the time. Each band can also be set to different uh, EQ shapes. I mostly used peaking filters here with the the analog bell shape, but there's also a digital bell, there's high shelf, high cut, all these different uh, multiple variations of the digital bell as well. So, And finally, you can turn down the gain effect. You can flatten it out and then even reverse it, which is very, very cool. I really like this plugin. I find it fast to use, and I use that channel mode option a lot. I wish that this maybe had a few more bands and definitely wish it had a resizable window. Next up is the Tokyo Dawn Records Nova. On the left, there's the Standard Edition. On the right, there's the Gentleman's Edition, which is the paid version. Standard Edition is free. Four parametric bands uh, with additional high-pass and low-pass filters. It's a dynamic EQ, so it, uh, it can detect when there's too much of a certain frequency and then turn down the, the volume automatically for that, uh, for that frequency band. And that can work with the source signal or an external signal. It's pretty much the same with the Gentleman's Edition with a few more bands. There's, there's uh, six bands plus the two filters. The dynamic mode is pretty similar. It's a little more con uh, advanced controls here. You can adjust the, the side chain a little bit more. And, uh, and an automatic gain correction as well. So it's hard to say if this is worth more money. It's, I can't remember how much it was. I think it's 50 euros, 50 pounds for it. So it's a quite a big difference in price compared to free. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the uh, Gentleman's Edition and we'll just try to do this with the four bands and uh, see how it goes. some dropouts for some reason. I'm not sure why, but let's just try that again in the chorus. When you're limited to four bands, you can't really do all that you want to do. And this one also can't do the different channel modes. You can do it for the entire plugin. Uh, you can force it into mono or stereo. You can work on just the sum or the, the uh, what's common between the left and right channels, the difference, or just left and just right. It's the entire plugin will process that channel rather than a single band. I find that to be 
limiting a lot of times. There are only three different band shapes per band, but it does have this dynamic mode, which is great. So I have I used it on band two to kind of control that bass note. Uh, something that is unique in this uh, compared to the last two plugins that we saw is that you can solo the bands. And when using the any of the dynamic modes, you can listen to what's being removed. And I think that's pretty cool. This one also has uh, automatic EQ gain. I'm not really a fan of it, but let's just hear the difference. It's causing some dropouts today. I don't know. It's probably just a combination of recording video at the same time. Uh, usually it's working really well. Uh, and I don't even have the analyzer on. So I don't know. Weird day. So yeah, I, I would recommend this because it's a free plugin. You can get a lot out of it. Just having this for the uh, dynamic EQ and then use re-EQ or Tone Booster's EQ for the other stuff would be a great combination. I don't think this can do everything that you want to do. Next up is the new Tone Booster's EQ. This is EQ4. And let's just uh, see how this goes. I kind of like this EQ, but not as much as I hoped I would like this EQ. It's not clearly better than EQ3 because it's so different. What it gets right is that you can resize the window. What it gets right is that you can have a lot more bands. You can scale back the amount of, of the EQ, but you can't reverse it. Not something I used a lot in EQ3, but it seems weird that it's taken out. So mouse control feels right uh, moving up and down. It it's, doesn't seem you know, too fast or too slow. Mouse wheel seems about right. It's a little slow, I'd say, and it's kind of reversed a re-EQ if you're not used to that. Push up to make it narrower. This one push up to make it narrower. 
Say, this is slower than this is. This is pretty fast. And, you know, maybe that's more precise, but it's different. You can double click to add a new point. Press the X to delete. Many different band types, 60 dB per octave um, filters, which is pretty crazy. And this is the only one that has different uh, skins or themes for it. So you can kind of uh, customize this the way that you like it, but it uh, unfortunately does not have different colors per band. And that's something that I've always liked about the EQ3. Having the bands in this order just sort of seemed to make sense always. But I get it. It makes sense to have this uh, with themes because a lot of the newer version 4 plugins from Tone Boosters have these themes. This is also a uh, dynamic EQ. So there's a compressor, there's a threshold here, there's a ratio. Uh, this is also an upward compressor so it can boost the signal, which uh, can be kind of interesting. It has an auto attack and release mode. Different uh, channel modes, so that's, that's all good. And auto makeup gain if you want it, and that's per band. Now we're on to the Waves F6, and this one is one that I'm demoing. I don't know if I'm going to buy it. Uh, it's currently on sale for $29 at the time of this recording. Hopefully it's still on sale uh, if you like it, but gotta say this is kind of a weird one. Let's hear it. What's crazy about this one is that mouse control makes no sense. So I'm pushing up, it goes up, I push down, it goes down. It That feels about right, but it also responds to horizontal movement. Uh, so if you have a magic mouse, this is just... It can be really confusing to get this in the right spot. It probably works great with a touchscreen, with a touch-sensitive mouse, it's awful. Especially because I'm swiping to the right, moving my finger towards the right, and it's going to the left. So it's reverse, and I cannot get my head wrapped around that. And also, it moves very, very fast. So let's look at re-EQ, how fast this one moves. It, like, stays with the mouse. This one, like, I don't know. Like, that's crazy. 
mouse movement on on the knob. I don't know. It it's not right. If I use a knob on a controller, it's super slow. So this is with the last touched thing, and this is with a, a knob that emulates mouse wheel. So that's really slow. And then Reaper's control, that's pretty smooth. Just using the mouse is weird. Each band can be set to stereo, mid, or side. It has three band shapes, high shelf peaking filter, or, bit, or bell shape filter, and, a, and a, a low shelf. Each band is dynamic, so there's threshold, attack, and release. Uh, you can have it listen to the internal or external sidechain per band. Seems like a pretty nice feature. And, or you could have it listening to the entire frequency or spectrum or just uh, that frequency range. There is a different version of this that has a real-time analyzer which is pretty nice. I'll just pull that one up real quick. So that one looks like this, pretty much exactly the same, but uh, let's bypass this. I'm in the running today. And if there's more than one... But it has a, kind of a nice real-time analyzer in the background. Uh, this one also has the band listen function which you could do with the solo button or by right-clicking a band. That's interesting. It's an interesting way of doing it. Oh, one other really cool thing, actually, um, you can marquee select a bunch of bands and then move them together. None of the other ones can do that. So uh, I think that's kind of a cool feature. A lot of the Waves plugins do that, but you don't see it elsewhere. So that's about it. Uh, this one is normally, I think it's $100 no normal price. It's on sale for $29 right now. So in conclusion, I think Tone Booster's EQ3 is my favorite. That along with Nova is pretty much all I need. For general track EQ, I end up going with uh, Re-EQ as my first choice. But if I know there's some sort of mid-side EQ that I need to do, if I need to EQ one side different than the other, then I usually switch over to the Tone Boosters EQ. Both of them I'm very fast with. The other ones I feel uh, like the interface gets in the way. And that's where I'll leave this video for today. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this long video comparing five different EQs. There are a lot of other EQs out there, of course, and uh, these ones are just kind of what has my attention at the moment. And hopefully you guys got something out of it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.